Welcome to the Great British Pinball Podcast, and here are your hosts, Scott Rundell and Neil McRae. Welcome, everybody. Better late than never. It is the fabulous. We know you've missed us. You know you've been wondering. You've been checking your podcasts every day saying, where is the next episode of the Great British Pinball Podcast? I'm joined by my great friend, Scott. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Scott. Um, Been a busy month for both of us uh, in different ways. Um, But uh, welcome to episode 10. Well, actually, kind of strict, kind of maybe you could argue episode 11, but episode 10, we've made it through, we've we've got to double figures. We're starting to lose our teeth and uh, starting to think about how cool we look on Instagram because we are at that (laughs) that, that 10. We don't even have an Instagram site, so that's just made up nonsense. But uh, yeah, no, it's great um, to get to episode ten. Um, a little bit of feedback. Let me just cover a little bit of feedback on 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 nine. We know it was too long, um, and that's why we split it up. I hope that worked. It seemed to work when we look at views. It didn't put any too many people off, but um, we just had such a good conversation with the guys. We just thought. Which just you know we were thinking about should we trim it blah, blah, blah. but we thought let's just put it out there, um and actually so part two of so we are actually going to have a kind of two parter on this as well, um and part two will be I'm going to talk about TPF in the main section and then we got some of the guys that came to TPF with us at, um in kind of part two of this and that'll just be a separate thing on its own, I think we we kind of cut the podcast in half which i think probably in hindsight was not the best solution but um we didn't have a lot of time we wanted to get it out and um hope, thanks for bearing with us um and thanks everyone for the positive feedback i don't know about you scott but um i'm i'm quietly you know excited about you know it's, it's effectively people listening to two guys in a pub um yeah yeah it's good so yeah, I, I get a lot of messages yeah, so both on the like, forum and privately, so it's it's good. Yeah, no, absolutely, and and um, I actually had someone ask if we're going to do t-shirts. Um, so <laughs> I, I, uh, I said that 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 would start for us to look like that we're serious. So I don't know about that, but we'll we'll uh, we might do we might do a few stickers or something. Um, okay, look, we're gonna um just quick highlights. So we're gonna try and cover. We'll we'll do a. What's going on in Scott and my life and, and our pinball life? We'll cover a little bit about that. We'll cover a little bit about what's going on in the pinball world, some new games. Uh, that'll lead us into kind of my TPF update. Um, we're going to talk about the thing that will not be talked about, secondhand market and reality versus reality. Um, and then we'll give a few updates on some events that have been happening and coming up um and uh i'll give a little bit of an update on pimple republic which i know a few folks uh, are always uh, keen to hear so scott um what's 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 cooking in your pinball world this last i don't know what a month five weeks since yeah it's probably, last month? it's probably been about five weeks isn't it um i don't know if my sins i decided it was a great idea to buy a pinball machine that had probably spent the best part of its life actually was accurately 12 years left turned off in a warehouse and then for the last year of its life was left for at least a day or so out in the rain and yeah. in, a puddle, in a puddle to boot um i decided to buy it because it was a good price it's effectively the equivalent of a barn find in this world uh for the uk i'd say uh it was a road show which is neil's favorite pin i hear <laughs> <laughs> uh, you bought a you bought a barn fine roadshow. Uh, I'm not going to ask how much it was, but um, I hope it wasn't too much. You, you would say it's too much, whatever number. I put probably up, I for a roadshow, but because given, I mean, it, as as I kind of, if you stripped off the theme, I'd probably like roadshow, but but the freaking country music just boils my blood. <laughs> um, I I was worried actually when we opened it up. There was the best part of a rat's nest in the back of it. Oh, um, and I was a little bit like, oh my God, is there a rat still in it? Thankfully, there wasn't. But there was like, I mean, 
if you ever wanted to look back and find stuff that was like original, like, um, you know, rappers for like hula hoops, which I think, I'm not sure what they call them in America. What's the call of hula hoops in America? They don't have them, I don't think. Do they not? Oh, they're, they're missing out. But the original packet design was in there from like 12 years ago. I was like, oh, wow. And then we had the, the 12 when they used to do Cadbury's 12 with an orange font. I was like, oh, look, I'm looking back in time here. It's like going basically to the point of the, around a decade ago where rappers were like, obviously the marketing's changed. Yeah, I was thinking, it's funny you should say that. I was thinking about, I can't remember what made me think this, but... um. Oh, I know what it was. I was so I was in Florida on a holiday. I went to Disneyland, and um, I don't know if so. I've got an iPad that I use for like watching movies and stuff on the plane, and, and right, YouTube's got this cool new feature that I'd never noticed actually. So you can download move, you can download stuff and watch it offline, but they've got this kind of automatic download stuff, and. Um, it, it downloaded so I, I love 80s TV. I, I just I find it fascinating. Um not both from a from a content point of view, but also so I'm I'm kind of a broadcaster in in in, in my kind of day job. Well I kind of was. I'm still still kind of involved in it as a consultant, but um you're always trying to figure out how can I how can I bring a a unique touch to a broadcast or a video or something. I'm and I'm not creative enough to really do it. So I nick everybody else's ideas. And uh, <laughs> one of one of the most sem- and people people laugh about this now, but uh, trust me on this. Go back and watch it. One of the most kind of sem- seminal shows in this space is Miami Vice. I don't know if you watched that back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I do remember it. But so I'm always watching YouTube clips from Miami Vice, and and it downloaded this one. It automatically downloaded this one clip, um, which I remember watching. I must have been, I don't know, 14, 13 or something. I don't know, some early teens. Um, Because Miami Vice was kind of too violent for me, so I used to watch it. (laughs) I had this black and white telly on my ZX Spectrum, and I would secretly turn it on really quiet. And tune in BBC One because everyone at school would be talking about Miami Vice, and I'm the geek in the corner that wasn't allowed to watch it. Um, so uh, anyway, the the um, it downloaded this one where um, anyway, I won't go into the story of it, but um, I'll post a link to the to the video. But um, I was just looking at it, thinking, my God, how life was so different. I was on the plane, and and um, you know, I I. You know, actually, there's a quick, a very quick, um, picture of a pinball machine in this clip, and um, I was just thinking, crikey, um, I just feel like I wish I would been turned on to pinball back then, and enjoyed what must have been like new games coming out. Okay, they yeah. aren't they aren't LCDs and LEDs, but I kind of feel like oh, if that was if there was a if there was a time machine. That that would be probably second on my list to. Um... It it is weird you mentioned that because I notice a lot of films now when I'm watching films and I spot a pinball machine in the background and I never would have picked up on them in the past. No, I, I completely I, I, almost filtered them out. If I anything what, else, have you, have you watched that TV program? I think this was it was either on it was on one or two shows that my wife watches and I kind of like them. I I'll be on my laptop kind of half tuned into them, but. It was either elementary or it was um, this Canadian thing about a guy and his dog. I forget. It's a crime show. My wife watches Alibi TV. It's like constantly on in our house. I actually kind of like it because it's it's a bit more thinking rather than the the rubbish that's not typically on TV. But yeah, I'm, I'm like my wife. My wife goes, "Oh, there's a pinball machine on this." And I was looking up and I was like, and I could see the corners. I'm like, "What is it? What is it?" And then it panned. It's bloody Dragon Fist, like one of the most rare stern classics of all freaking time. And this is a relative <laughs> program. I'm like, where the hell did they get that from? I actually have picked one up, but it's in a, it's not in the best condition. Um, I picked it up with stars um, for a for an unbelievably cheap deal. But um, yeah, I just thought you know back in those uh, you know 
those days, just life seemed so simpler. Um, it probably wasn't. Um, but I just, uh, I kind of just think, I feel like going back to old, you know, if I could go back and wake me up, you know, in Back to the Future where he's got, he's got yeah. the outfit on, he's going, I am Darth Vader. Um, and uh, do that to, to to young Neil McCray to say, you know, tune into this pinball a bit more. Um, I, you know, I did get there in the late, Late later eighties, early nineties, but I think some great moments of pinball probably missed. Um, but yeah, so roadshow, and and I guess it's a rebuild job. Yeah, <laughs> that's an understatement. I mean, like I was afraid to turn it on, so I didn't because it was basically so heavily rusted. The transformer was basically orange, not 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 like its token kind of grayish black, maybe with a tint of fade or or tarnish to it, I should say. Um, everything was rusted, uh, even the leg plates, the braid. Uh, it was just there was black mold all over the all over the cabinet. It was in a terrible condition. There was warpage on the cabinet. Um, I've got some like video shots that I uploaded as part of my own channel, and and um, the the base of the cabinet is basically separated from the sides. You can move it with your hand. It was wobbling, <laughs> so yeah. the cabinet was just in terrible condition back box was worse um but it's but it's recoverable oh i've i've restored it i've done it You've done uh, it. it's it's basically it's taken me the best part of five six weeks but i've I've got it done it's um i've, I've basically re um re powder coated pretty much anything that was rusted uh replaced anything that i couldn't powder coat with brand new parts um I uh, transformer, I just stripped it all down and, and basically used a vapor rust. It was the only thing I could do to get that thing yeah. into a, a somewhat usable. I was really worried about the coils because anyone who might not understand what a transformer is, but effectively it's a bunch of coils, a huge amount of coils in there that carry different voltages. And obviously for its sins in our country, it'll carry 240 volts in from your circuit. Um, if they are fused, which is the term they use when coils have, have effectively become joined together, sure, um, sure. you're out of luck. Yeah, yeah, you'll you'll have a short, and it will bang a big in bang. a big way. Yeah. And the, magic, the magic smoke is released. Magic smoke and maybe a fire. Yeah. <laughs> so I was a little bit like when I finally got it all back together, because obviously I stripped it all down, everything was in parts, put it all back together. Um, I turned it on, and I was just holding my breath thinking is this going to blow up the only thing that didn't make it was the at the end was the dmd yeah. it worked for one power on and then after that it went i'm done <laughs> I, I, if, if there was something i was going to think that was going to go it would be the dmd but i guess you put a color dmd in it anyway so uh, i found a spare I, like literally i did a big clear out before uh, about two weeks before i turned it on i had a massive clear out. i just thought I, i'm doing a big house cleanup at the moment and I decided to get rid of a ton of parts. Yeah. I made best part of a grand just yeah. selling my old junk. People, you know, one man's junk is a man's treasure, as they say. Yeah, um, so, yeah, I just got rid of a ton of DMD screens. I think I had four. Um, thankfully, I kept one spare because I needed it. But I, I don't know. It depends. If I keep Roadshow, I'll probably will switch it out to a color screen. I'm just in two minds whether I do or I don't, which... We'll talk about later about the second hand market and, and yeah. you know whether or not I'd want to put significant investment like a color screen into it. So yeah, exactly. yeah, it, it it's come out good. I'm happy enough with it. That the real sods, if anyone's ever touched the roadshow, they'll understand it. It's a pretty much like the Twilight Zone clock. The faces are an absolute sin. Whoever designed those, and I think it must have been Pat Lawyer, didn't really think about the maintenance that goes around them in the long term. <laughs> I mean, and this is the thing. People say, oh, these Williams games of the 90s are, you know, they're bulletproof bullshit. It's just nonsense. I've owned them all. Yeah. And they're all a freaking nightmare. Star Trek, uh, even Indiana Jones is challenging. It's probably the, it's probably the, the, the least challenging of them all. But, um, nah, the, the Judge Dredd, like, just lifting that play field when there's something wrong with it. Demo Man. Oh, don't, yeah. I mean, some of them, I mean, some of these are good games. I like them, but I could never own one again. It's just, I mean, I, I own that era. I own 
Indy 500 and the Shadow and Jackpot predominantly because they're good competition games. Yeah. And they're they're simple enough that the the most complex bit's probably the battlefield on Shadow, um, which has got a funny set of drop targets at the back that can be a pain in the ass. But yeah, I think the biggest dial in for me on on Shadow is probably the drop target that comes at the uh, that blocks yeah, you the going back. into the yeah, yeah at the back because getting that dialed in just right. It can be a real finicky like mechanism that one. Yeah, actually, in fact, which, uh, so yeah, I mean, if I just talk about drop targets, I've got a drop target story in a minute, but um, yeah, it's it's kind of um, you know, those games are people love them because of the uh, kind of the, the toys and the, the novelty, and and it's like you know, they're these are hard games to keep going, especially on location. So you know, if, oh, if, yeah, if I, I think any at, game that's on free play, I would. You know, what I mean, that accelerates its its maintenance cycle, so to speak. So, I mean, uh, every time we've had, so we've had a road, we've had roadshow, next gen, uh, Judge Dread, those three games in the club, and James is effort time on them to keep them going. It's probably something like twenty to one. So if wow. I if I if I think of Indy five hundred. He probably spent twenty amount, twenty times the amount of time on Star Trek as Indy Five Hundred, and you know, I, I I used to kind of get a bit frustrated by it because I was like, "Crikey, man, these games just need so much effort to keep going." And it's the reason I mean, this is why Stern do that pro model, which is kind of stripped back. Oh, yeah, that's, where make it it that's exactly where I was going with this. Where you know, there's a a discussion on um on a Discord that I'm on about. You know reliability and, and basically, you know, they're saying you know how reliable are stands. It's like pros super reliable, premiums bit of tweaking and the occasional tweak that you need. But um, you know anything that's simple, you know, it's 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 Newton almost like anything that's more complicated comes with a price tag of maintenance and and um, you know, you. I think the pinball manufacturers. I get the sense that they're trying to balance that a little bit more. But sometimes, you know, um, I can. Was I think it's Elvira. That fucking house. Excuse my language. Um, <laughs> but when there's a problem with that house, Jesus, man, it's so painful to take it apart. A bit. Fix it and then put it back together and and. And and it's actually not that complicated a, a, a mech, if you want to call it that. But um, the way that they've built it has clearly been price managed. Let's say, um, not not necessarily in a negative way, but a couple of quid more, and like the, how the optos are just would have been simpler. And also the 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 manual. I showed it. That's one of the things I want to talk about next as well. The manual that shows the picture of it on. You know that comes with the game, or you can download it from Stern's website. Yeah, it's just not. It's such a high level picture; it's not helpful. Um, and and I think that's the one thing that's missing, right? In the old Williams and Ballets era, you would have full blown schematics, like you could literally rebuild the game from scratch if given that option. And let me just get you an example of how to do it, right? So we'll come on to this later on, but. This is the manual for Pulp Fiction. Okay, so he's showing it, and it's a really... For yeah, those who can't see the camera, it's a, uh, it's a really yeah. thick A4 it's, it's like It's like an old yellow pages. Do you remember? Like, yeah. the thick book. And but and and, the, and if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see this, but the, but the detail... That's a lot of detail, every, yeah. Every single component. I don't think I've ever seen a modern pin with that kind of manual. That's crazy. <laughs> So the only two companies that have had it, have seen but you don't get that with Cactus Canyon. So is that because there was a it was a different company that was working with CGC to make? Oh, I don't know. So there is. So actually, you, you, so you don't get a printed copy with Cactus Canyon, but there's yeah. detail of manual on CGC's website. So if you've got a CGC game, this big beautiful manual, um, it, it, so Pulp Fiction's stand out a little bit on this, but. They have got so there's a guy called Booch who works for CGC. He actually used to work for JGP, and right. JGP used to have glorious manuals like that. 
because Butch did. Mm. And um, he is, this guy, um, if you get a chance to meet him, um, I've met him a couple of times at different shows. Um, I'm trying to remember his surname, it's gone out of my head. Um, but he is the manual genius. Uh, Butch Peel, his name is. And he he did, like, the most glorious manuals. So my, so I've, I've got a dialed-in manual. Right. Uh, it's exactly the same in terms of thickness and detail. So his and influence is obviously carried across then. Yeah, so he, I, think, I, I think he's one of these people that loves to do that sort of shit. And I think, I don't think he... I, I'm going to guess, right... And, and I, this is a pure guess, pure speculation on my part, that he does that kind of a little bit in his own time because he likes to do it because the amount of effort that must go it's into huge. that. And, yeah. and, and not only that, Scott, and this is a thing for mod makers, if you download the PDF version of that, you can zoom into a point where actually you can get a proper scale so it's not just so. You, so if you wanted to make oh, like, so the done to plastic, scale, right? Yes, yeah, so if you wanted to make a plastic part, that manuals to scale, and that for me is how it should be, and and I wish you know, I definitely wish Stern would do that. There's no chance they ever will, but the thing is, is that this is it, there's these little things. If you're an operator, you know, and you've got a lot of games and you're trying to fix them quickly, like, and, and I'll explain my issue with with um, Elvira. Um, I had a, um, a kind of mini tournament here whilst the Pinball Republics were kind of getting together and, and the, the kind of core, not the core group of members, but actually anyone's invited from the, from, to, to the events, but it's focused on the club guys because we used to have a Thursday night event. And I was getting a stuck ball on Elvira, and it turns out that in the garage there's this one-way gate. And when I took, took the thing apart, there's the, the one way gate is only attached on one side. There's nothing attached on the other side. So what's happened is is it's moved. Um, right. there's no post holding it. And the ball gets stuck because of it. And I'm like, well, I think surely they just didn't send it to one post. And if you look down through this other kind of the bit in the middle of the ball guides, there's a there's like a a a, a mark for where a post should be. But you look on them, and then when you go look in the manual, it looks like there is a post there. But I pinged Stern Tech Support, and actually, um, thanks to Carl who came back pretty quickly on it. Um, it's and even in the design, this he, he they've got access to all the kind of deep designs. It's not yeah, obvious yeah. that there should be a post there. But anyway, I put one in, um, and problem solved. But it, but it was really hard. But whereas on the CGC games. You build a super detail because there's so much detail there, right? This uh, is the thing I had with Rocho. It's like you know, you get to the manuals, and, and as you say, the faces are. It's a very built animatronic um, mech. It's got little tiny solenoids that are pretty much exclusive to Funhouse and Rocho, I think. Um, and they operate the eyelids opening and yeah. shutting, the eyelids going, the eyes going left and right, and the mouth. Is you know done by an armature, um, but the point is is that when you look on the manual, it's all blown out yeah. because I, I had to look at it, and obviously over its years, someone's probably an operator location switched coils around, so there should have been a certain coil strength to carry the eyelids going down, another one for the eyelids um, opening, and they'd reversed them. And the one, because they'd reversed them, I think it caused one of the cores to blow out because it was expecting a certain strength. And, you know, knowing the positions of them, because I can't question someone who had it previously, and I can't go by what's there because it's wrong, the manual is invaluable because I need to understand that no one's going to have a picture online of the of the breakdown. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, manuals I mean... to me are very much invaluable for, for restorations. And then, I mean, this is the thing where forums come into play where you say, hey, can everyone take a picture of this? Or has anyone got a picture of this or seen it? Because quite often that can help, especially with Elvira. So I posted on the, the group and there was definitely some people who definitely had a post and some people who definitely didn't have a post. So it's weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a one-off. Like some bozos forgot to put the post in when they were assembling this. But Do you think a... it was maybe like a revision that was done later on maybe? So, or the original run had it, and then they thought actually it's not needed, and they took it out. Yeah, no, I think um, so. 
Elvira, the original game that came out was the LE. Um, the LEs came out first, and they had a couple of things that they didn't get right. So there was a, a ball guide miss, not missing, not right on the house, and then the the, the thing that spits the ball out, the vuck that spits the ball out, was misaligned. Yeah, like the guard goal error, I think. Yeah, but they were all supposed to be fixed in the premium. I've got a premium, um, and but this, I don't know if this is different or anyway. I, the post saying life is good, but it, it, I mean, honestly, manufacturers do not underestimate the value. I, and actually, if you're listening to this and you want to, you truly want to learn more about how pinball stuff works, go look at the manuals on CGC's website, chicagogaming.com. Um, they're all there. You can download them. Um, honest to God, there is so much information about it. You could build from the manual. You could build the game. There's no question. You know, from... so that's what you want, right? Absolutely. I, say, I go back to like you know having schematics. It's like, I mean, I bought a jukebox, as you know, back in January. Oh my god, that was the worst idea of buying that jukebox. <laughs> it <laughs> been an absolute nightmare. I did, like, I did try to warn you. <laughs> that that tra the, the transformer on that thing is is fused, which is goes back to what I mentioned with the roadshow, and no one has parts. So we're now in a, to a position where we're pulling from the schematics and the transformer is going to have to be basically built out separately. So we'll have one for 30 volt, one for 110. Do you know what I mean? We'll, we'll do maybe a switching power supply for a lot of the easy ones, like 30 volts, 12 volts and that. But there's like a step up where it needs to have 275 volts in. It's going to be a pig. It's going to look like an absolute, like, how can I put it, Frankenstein under there when we're done? Because no one has the transformer for that jukebox anymore. It's just oh, this, this is 1950s. It's the, just too old. The old school transformers um, that you get, actually, and again, I'm, this is a case in, in what I'll talk, what I'll talk about in a minute, but they weigh a ton. And they've got Absolutely. a lot of valuable materials in them. And everyone goes down a kind of switching route rather than a, than a kind of transformer route now because it's so much cheaper and lighter. Yeah. Um. Some people say more, uh, kind of more. There's better reliability. I I don't. I'm not sure I buy that. But, um, you know, it's it's. I mean, I'll. I would say one thing with Transformers. I mean, that one was soaked in water and left off for 12 years and it still worked. So, oh, that's yeah. It. yeah, they are, they're thing. built like tanks. But at the end of the day, as you said, there's not a lot to go wrong because it's just a heavy exactly. amount of coils. Exactly. But that, and this is the point it's like, it's like the rawest of physics. You know, there's no, yeah. there's no magical electronics in this. It's purely physics. And, and actually, so my day job is we build these high-end internet routers and power is just the biggest challenge getting power okay. to, getting power to places getting the right voltage to places and it's not just about the right it's like it's about enough because if you send too much voltage things start to get hot and we're in data centers where the cooling's a premium it, it's it, the whole thermals of of it is uh i i, I you know it's i didn't really have a uh an understanding of how difficult that is. And pinball actually they largely got it easy because they got space everywhere. Um yeah, it's hard. It's I think it's big. genuinely hard for stuff to overheat other than flipper coils. We can yeah. I think yeah. we've covered that one point before around flipper fade. So so any any other new things or or, or comings or goings in, in your in your um beautiful collection of games I don't think I've seen it so tidy in my life by the way mate. You my, yeah my, I learned it took ago. a lot of it took a lot of effort to get it to a position where they're all clean, but like it's it's sod's law, you know. I get everything clean and I go to play one, and what happens? One, it just breaks. Bang. Yeah, For fuck's sake. It, it, was, like this, my, it, it was my cyberpunk as well. It decided the, yeah. the um the glove motor has given up, so wow. I, I've rebuilt the gearbox, but the actual motors died. It makes a clicking noise. I'm like, for God's sake, I'm gonna have to get a new motor now. So yeah, it's, it's so not the end of the world. But it goes back to that point you're saying. Joining, you know, old William and Bally's, they ain't bulletproof. No, and, and uh, you know, if like, you know, if you've got time to fix it and stuff, it's great, but you know, I just don't have the time for it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I've literally been in this room, I've probably spent, I don't know, eight hours in the last two months. 
actually maybe long the last six weeks uh, partly because i've been on holiday in in, in the u.s but um yeah so <clears throat> let's wind back so yeah. what's going on in, uh, in my world pinball wise i say quite a lot <laughs> um not planned but uh a few things that kind of came up so i went to tpf and i'll talk about that in a minute but um the i bought a flash gordon off nice uh, on the forum actually it has, it's, it's sitting in martin's storage unit somewhere because um he was gonna i told him to deliver it to i've got a couple of storage units right now one here in Woking that you've been in actually and one one in um one in Croydon for for when the club reopens and and um he was going the wrong one I said no no I don't because I wanted to get it home and just check it out well well because the club should probably shut for another couple of months um hopefully less but probably um we're two months away from reopening but um he um uh, so he's got it I'm not worried about it because I got nowhere to put it so I picked that up um which was which was uh unexpected i also bought a lethal weapon a data east lethal weapon um, wow yeah so uh it was on again on the forum it was a bargain it was like two grand or something like that um very you know decent con not not mint condition but pretty good condition everyone working uh i gotta go figure out how to pick that up it's actually a guy who lives not that far away from me that's part of the reason why i did it as well because it was close um, but again, I, I bought that kind of thinking about the UK Open because trying to juggle a few games, and then and then the big the big one you can probably if if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can see it gl glimmering in the background is Pulp Fiction. Um, I cannot believe how lucky I got on Pulp Fiction. So I'm still amazed you managed to bring it in from the states. Oh, that's an easy task. Well, it's not easy if you've not done it before. It's it's it, it, the hard part is is figuring out how to do it. I've done it enough that it's it doesn't worry me. And actually, I've, I came very 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 close to also buying um Jaws Premium. I was this close to doing it. Um, okay. Even not though... tempted to get anything like the um spooky stuff like Looney Tunes or Texas. Uh, yeah, let me let me let me come back to all that in the in the yeah, uh, sure. TPF and the stuff that we saw there. Um but so um I, I literally walked in to TPF on the Thursday while so was setting up <clears throat> this guy wheels in. So I, I already spoken to the local dealer uh, actually Craig at Fun um, he's the local dealer for TPF. He brings in an enormous amount of games. He's a great guy. Actually, you saw it at one of the guys with uh, um, Godzilla Topper last minute. Uh, actually, Paul Bouger, he um, he managed to get a Godzilla Topper. So I'm hoping that Paul's working on putting his Godzilla in the Godzilla Topper because it's got the horrible one from the game. But um, yeah. I spoke to Craig and said, hey, man, have you got any... Pulp Fiction. So, the the genesis of this is is um, I played I played Pulp Fiction again in the US, and I was like, I want to get this game, and um, I was I was kind of knocked at, so I, I kind of hassled CGC a little bit on the on pin site and said, for God's sake, guys, talk to talk to your customers. What's happening? When's it happening? And you know you'll relate to this through Cactus Canyon. Um, yeah, sure. You know, the, and, and you'll see my Cactus Canyon is in bits. I'll come back to why that is in a minute. Um, oh, yeah, I hadn't even noticed that in the background. Yeah, yeah so it's so it's up. Um, it, it's not a problem, It's it's. It, but, but I'll, I'll talk about it. So anyway, I got the best, uh, the best I got from CGC is, is the LEs will be done bef this year before the end of the year. Um, so in some ways, that's a good thing. In other ways, that's a bad thing because it could come close to me losing our bet. Yep. Because if they're made in November, they're not going to make it to the UK. No, they'll make it to Jan, which is why I said to you February next year, January yeah, February so, next year. So, but I have faith in CGC that they're not going to let me down and that I'm going to we'll, win. We'll see. The so track record like, doesn't show me any confidence, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, but so, I'd love to be proved wrong. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's a lot of 
detail and I mean, the, I think the Cactus Canyon story is slightly different um, to like Monster Bash or Attack from Mars. Uh, although actually, Attack from Mars, <laughs> I, I, I basically answered the door on Christmas Eve, and there's a guy with Attack from Mars. No notice that it was being delivered. That, well, that's a Christmas I, present. <laughs> I was like, yay! I was like, I'm gonna have something to play with this week over Christmas. It was really, I was, I was, I was both knocked and happy about it. Yeah. Uh, which wasn't expecting anyway. Um, so, and he didn't have any, and I was phoning around saying, anyone got, and, and basically, no one had. I could get one with the black coin door, the like the location coin door, um, which is a standard two slot uh coin door that everyone's familiar with from the US. Yeah, I didn't really want that. Um, and then you wanted that traditional. 1970s. I wanted, I wanted a silver it. one. Hold on. Yeah. yeah there it is. It's a beautiful. It's very one. iconic, isn't it? Yeah. They, they nailed it on that. So I get, um, as I'm turning up, there's a guy wheeling one in with a for, for sale sign on. I said, I'll, and I just basically told him, I'll take it. He's like, you don't know how much it is. I was like, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll take it. And um, and then I suddenly thought, mm, maybe I should have got the price before I said that. Anyway, it, it, he was basically selling it for a couple of hundred bucks under retail. Um, Not bad, considering. Well, exactly. So I literally got his PayPal account and paid him, and he was like, awesome. He said, do you want me, he said, do you want me to take it out? I was like, no, nah, leave it. Let people play it. Um, That's nice of you. That's good. Yeah. And, um, well, and, and so, and then this is the glory of TPF. And actually, it, it kind of, they kind of screwed me last year because they weren't there, but, there's a company that's that I've that's, that I've used a few times to ship pins. Not always these guys, but but sometimes um, they're always at TPF, um, and you can buy a game. And they literally at the end of the show they come round with a van, a truck, and they they take it away for you and they ship it to you. Right? I mean, it, it's literally, it's literally like a white glove service. You just say, "Hey, this is my game." They stick a sticker on it. And then there's a bunch of guys with trolleys that pick them up, wheel them to their depot. They then package them. They send and then they send them to you, right? Um, and they can deal with international freight as well as international. You know, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, the international bit's a bit trickier for them. And there's, they warn you like there's some variability in this because, you know, when you're sending something like that, it, it's kind of like a three way journey. There's like the local, the, there's the local part to the airport. There's the airport to the airport, and then there's the airport to the delivery bit, and yeah. three different sections that they've got to glue together and price you for, and then you've got customs, etc. So, um, <clears throat> but these guys just nailed it. I mean, I, I had the game a week after. Was this how much is this pin worth? Oh, it's two grand. <laughs> I didn't go. I did. Let's say I didn't go. <laughs> I didn't go that low, but let's say I let's say I I, I went like I think I went six and a half. Uh, right, okay. More more because um, if it was like a stern game, I, I, I always wonder what costers would think if they see a pinball machine because they can't see that many. No, well, yeah, I mean it's a it's a tough one, but they can always Google it. That's the problem, right? But yeah, it's true. If, yeah, it's if, not if, like yeah. If it'd been like a stern, like if it been something like, I don't know, Iron Man. I would have said two grand because you, they're easy to find, right? Yeah. Um, and and if it breaks, you know, if something got broken, I could probably replace it. But Pulp Fiction, I was like, if this game gets bust or damaged, I'm sure you're affecting the value, aren't you? Yeah. So, and actually, I bought this game. I mean, it's going to end up in the club because I've still got my BMF order in with Phil. And actually, I, I will tell you, right? Um, I probably saved. Three hundred dollars, maybe four hundred dollars, importing it myself. Um, I don't think it's about the price, though, is it? It's no, it wasn't for me. It wasn't about the price. Getting it now, I, twelve I months before everyone else. Yeah, I definitely would not recommend anyone doing what I've done with a brand new game, unless you're happy to kiss ten grand away. Um, you know, yeah. if, if if anything had happened to this, I was screwed basically. And there's a different. Yeah. I've I've imported couple of new games but they were in boxes so if, if they're new in box it's probably a lot safer this was not new in box so they had to wrap it for me and again these guys took care of all that they did a great job they put it in this big crate which i probably wouldn't do again because it was it, it 
it it was it added a bit of, a chunk of cash to the delivery price, not a huge amount, but um, I ended up. Having... So what would you do instead? You just like what foam pad it and then. Yeah, they, they, it. They, and actually, they did that anyway. So when I took the crate out, it was already foam pad. And I was like, hey, if they just delivered us on a pallet, it would have been fine. Yeah, just like um, yeah, top up. On a pallet, job done. Yeah, and and actually, in any other game, that's what I would have done. Just because yeah. this Pulp Fiction, I didn't want to. The chance of finding another one and getting it shipped over was so low because I was trying to. You know, I spoke to about four or five different. Um, I was in the US for a while. I spoke to about four or five different distributors. I mean, some of them were like, "Look, Neil, I love you, but I don't want to piss off your local distributor by sending you a game." I was like, "Yeah, I get that, but." Um, send it to my Florida address. Do you know what I mean? Um, but look, um, it's not for, for JGP, CGC, and probably Spooky, um, this is not a way of saving money. And 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 and, and probably likely if something bad happens, um, it's going to cost you a ton of cash. So I would not recommend yeah. that. Unless you're crazy desperate like me for a game, and you're willing to say ten grand? I'm going to piss up the wall if if it if it if it goes, it goes. That's life. If it doesn't, um, fortunately for me, it, it went super well. Um, actually, the hardest part was getting out of the freaking crate. If you go my if you go on my YouTube channel, uh, you yeah, I did watch your video. God damn, that me. took a while. Jesus, it was well built. I mean, and then I then had the problem of getting rid of that wood, which because my wife was like, as soon as she saw, it's like. That's not staying in the garage. Um, That's a tip so, run. But so I literally ended up giving like four hundred dollars worth of cabinet away, um, which was a bit frustrating. But anyway, that's that's life. But um, so yeah, the the um, I mean, and and that's how I've got the manual and um, and actually so, and this is the thing the um, uh, I mentioned drop targets. Um, and actually, I forgot the Meg. I think I have. Um, so CGC, let me just see if I can find this for those of you. Or maybe not. Uh, oh, because I've missed too much mess here. Um, Is it the, well, the drop target mechanism in the game? Yeah, so so basically, um, when I started playing the game, I noticed that the drop target was, was kind of firing and not staying up. It was like machine gunning. Uh, Fidgeting, yeah, I call it. But yeah. And, and um, the on the... In Pulp Fiction, if you know the game, uh, on the right-hand side, that drop target is probably one of the most important shots in the game because it starts modes and it starts characters. And because it wasn't working right, I couldn't get to any modes. Anyway, um, I was playing, I was streaming it, and, and actually Josh Sharp, um, fair player Josh, he joined the stream. I didn't tell him anything, he just saw, saw I was I was on there. And uh, he was watching, and he pings and he says... Um, I just spoke to Mark Ritchie, and he reckons your drop target just needs moving back a bit from like if you just loosen the screws, move it back, tighten it, it should fix it. Um, and I had a quick go at it, and it improved it, but it's still doing it. And then Josh says, "Look, Doug Duba from CGC's like he said, if you he'll, he'll phone you and take you through fixing it." Uh, okay. And I was like, and when I was like, I'd love to do that, but I'm, I'm, I'm about to. This is just before I went on holiday. I was like, don't worry, guys, I'm not stressed out about it. It's, it's probably just moved in transport. Anyway, I, I eventually, um, the day before I flew out on holiday, I was bored, so I went and did did it properly. It's, and it still does it very occasionally, um, and and I think it's just, just I just, it's such a busy section of the playfield. It's just really hard to get into. Anyway. It's working great now. It does it once or twice every every blue moon, but um, but the drop. I kind of had that issue with the Star Trek Vengeance. You know that drop target in the yeah. front of the ship. Yeah, it's... that that one is really fidgety. Like you have to have a certain blue spring, which is a different blue spring to all the other bloody blue springs Stern make. But credit to Stern, they shipped me a new spring for it. I'm kind of annoyed that I can't find this mech because. Um... Is. Just so you understand, by the way, those listening on podcast, he's now running around his room and trying to look for it, which is why he sounds like he's a fifty miles away. The other thing that I do when things like <laughs> this happen, because I'm so lazy or lack of time, actually, um, I just ordered the entire drop target unit from 
PPS and it arrived. Um, and oh, I, okay, so you bought a new Mac. Okay, okay. I bought the entire new Mac, not because I need it, um, but... But you wanted to evaluate it versus yours to see what the difference is. Well, yeah, but I wanted to... Um, I just thought if, if there was anything wrong with it, I could just swap it out and it's fixed. Um, and then I've yeah. Spare parts, but I've, I've lost it, so... <laughs> Uh, hold on, hold on. Where the hell is it? Uh, I'll find it eventually. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, but the the I've done this before. So my Iron Maiden on my premium, I had this real issue with a ramp, the one in the club. I just thought yeah. I replaced it and it was fine. Um, and and it's not because <clears throat> I don't want to fix it. It's just because I don't have the time to fix it. Um. And and actually, this is this is a time before we had Robin at the club. I said it was Robin before we had um, James at the club, um, and you know he 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 just gets stuff fixed no without any issues. And and um, you know if he was if this was at the club, he'd have he would have fixed it in seconds. But anyway, the game is amazing. Um, it's Good. such a great game. It is brutally difficult. Do you think it's going to be? I, I don't know if they did. They do pinball awards for best pin of the year. Is that was that last year's contender? Or is that that was last year's year. Contender? So this game started shipping this year. So it'll be in the lineup. Um, yeah, this year. Um, but I, I, I just it, it's, you know, I don't know if it's because Josh Sharp was involved in it, but it's a game really. I mean, it, it's a, it's probably the best theme use ever, um, and you know, Tarantino was involved in in it. Yeah, I've seen the whole backstory. It's crazy that so, they, he was so like, no, I want this to look like nineteen seventies. I and, don't, I don't like the. I remember he even had arguments over the back glass. He was like, no, I don't look like a movie asset. It's got to be drawn. Do you want my team to draw it? I've seen that. It's it's it pretty cool that he was so into the and building what process. What difference it makes. I mean, you, you know, you compare this to Led Zeppelin, right? Again, I love Led Zeppelin. A lot of people hate it, but you know, they're they were like, yeah, we'll do. You know, we'll here's our assets. Build a pinball machine. We don't really care. Um. So what do you get? You get a Photoshop game, right? Um, yeah, asset drops. And, yeah. and and you look at the difference and like James and, Bond. Yeah, Bond as well. Um, but I had to say it. <laughs> oh, I, I see. The thing is, is people um, on on the art for Bond, people have a go at that. But for me, it's perfect. I, I so yeah, maybe. I, want, I want it to look like a Bond themed pin, and it does. If even the font, if, if you want it to look like a collage from your nursery days, Matt, Neil, it's all up to you, mate. That's, it. That's exactly what I wanted, to. and and um and and not only that, it's the fair play to Stern. The game is outstanding. It's one of their best games. You so. know what though? I have, when I played it around your house, I'll give you that. It plays well. It's yeah. nice. And yeah. I, to be honest, I probably prefer the 60th edition over the normal one. If I'm honest, yeah, the 60th is is a is. Phenomenal. I think the music's better. I honestly yeah, think the music. Yeah, better. They, I think um. I think Jerry did the music for the 60th, but not for the normal game. And I think it definitely shows. Not that the, the normal music's bad, but no, no, I just think it's better. It could be better. Um, but yeah, look, the the I mean, Pulp Function's hilarious. It swears like you wouldn't believe. Um, it's got a mode you can turn the swearing off, but it kind of just bleeps it out, and it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out what's being said. What's been said, yeah. Um. The game, it's, t it's a tough game. There's a bit of depth to it. Um, and actually, yesterday, I had my biggest game on it. I managed to roll it, finally. Uh, I've got mine set up. I always set my games up hard. Actually, on this game, you probably don't need to do that. It's so it's such a challenging game. Um, and the, the, on my, my game, it's kind of weird because... I've played this on like three or four different copies, maybe um maybe the most in, in recent memory. And all the other copies you could easily backhand the the mode shot. On my game you can't backhand the mode shot. It's just just in it and it just to do with flipper alignment, no? I don't know what a flipper alignment, pitch uh, uh, the fact this is a not a prototype, I don't know, but um it, it's I mean you can don't get me wrong, I've done it. 
but it's not like like on TNA, I can hit the the lock shot for multi ball off the backhand, like like clockworks. Like on this, I used to I used to like that in Black Knight where you could backhand into the shield. Yep. That was pretty cool. You cradled the ball, you could backhand it time and time again. Well, I mean, Black Knight like Venom. The way you play that game is you, you never, you know, you always backhand, never. If you, the minute you hit it, for, for an hand, bang, bang, you're dead. Um, yeah, I was going to say, if you try and shoot that shield shot from the left flipper, <laughs> you're, you'll yeah, probably you're, drain. Yeah, you're dead. So, and and um, Venom's very, very similar to that. Um, Did I hear, by the way, quickly, that they're doing a new run of Black Knight? Yes, pros, um, very limited. In fact, Two of the dealers, um, I, I was going to ping Phil and ask him if he gets one and they're, they're as cheap as they are in the US. I, w- I would take one for the club. Um, only doing pros. Because I heard something like $7,000 or something like that. Seven grand, it? yeah, which is yeah. bargain by today's standards. Um, Absolutely. Unless you're buying a medieval madness. But um, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> um, it's, 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 uh, you know, and, and actually I, I like the game. So, um, but if if and I'm, I'm going to try and catch up with Phil on Monday and see if he's getting any. But I know Coin Taker um, and uh, Tilt Amusements have sold out of their allocation, um, which is kind of weird. Interesting, isn't it? Because Black Knight was just it wasn't really it didn't sell well at all, did it? But and this is the thing with pinball, right? Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, themes become more important than gameplay, and that, that's but... you know that's a good talking subject. I do find like even like there's people out there in in other podcasts, let's just say that say licensed themes are the way to go, and I'm like, I don't know. I look at my collection. I don't really have that many licensed themes. I'm like, I mean, bear in mind my 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 collection is predominantly from the nineties when they were making a lot of unlicensed titles. I yeah. think I, I look at stuff like, probably this is good. So actually we can move on to things like Barrio actually. So we can do yeah. Barrio's barbecue is a good, good segue into that. But I feel like it's not that unlicensed themes are necessarily bad. I just don't think that they've made a good unlicensed theme recently. I think like the contender for me was Galactic Tank Force. I was really excited for it. I probably was, gonna, to be honest with you, I was 90% certain I was going to buy it. Then I saw the issues around how the tank was, you shoot it, and the ball was airballing over the flippers into the trough. And I was like, I, I don't know, this looks like a, a bad design to me, less a bad theme. So... I think for me, I still would be interested in a very unique theme. I mean, like, I look at, like, what maybe will happen with this um, Dutch pinball company. What are they called now? There's a new wing, a new division. Yeah. See what they come up with. Um, uh, We'll see what happens. Alice in Wonderland, I still find it intriguing. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I know you're like, oh, I'd avoid it like the plague. but So it's just got such a bad history with... um... John Popadu and so many people lost cash. I, it's like, yeah, I know. Pinball Brothers as well. When I, when I, you know, there's they've still got the stench of what happened with Highway all over them. In fact, they definitely have that stigma associated still. Yeah, 100%. and also from what I understand, the actual Pinball Brothers have left the company. They're not even part of it anymore. So... No, they're not. This is what I mean. All all the people I speak to, they are literally evangelists of pinball and even if you bought a game and you're like a third or fourth owner they'll still talk to you they'll still replace yeah, parts I mean, of you I mean, that's good but you know yeah. for me it, i don't know it's a hard one but there's too many people that were stitched up um you know lost thousands of pounds and that and and you know most quite a few of them can't afford that you know yeah and anyway the the um yeah, so anyway, Pulp Fiction is a great game. Um, actually, I think Phil has put Phil's got a demo one. He's putting into Retroids uh, arcade up. I think it's in. I want to say it's near Bir- just south of Birmingham. Um, actually, somewhere up, I would call it north. <laughs> 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 yes, it's in it's in War- 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 Worcester. Is that right, Worcester? 
W R C S. I don't even know how to fucking pronounce that. I I, I say Worcester, but some people say Worcester. Worcester. It's, like it's, yeah, it's 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 um yeah, it, it and they've actually got a great lineup of games. Uh, I keep meaning to get up there sometime, um, but yeah, the, he's going to put. I think Pulp Fiction's going in there, so it gives you a chance to play in location. This one will be in the the uh, Pinwheel Republic, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and yeah. move on some of the other game. So TPF. Let me just cover the games quickly in TPF. Well, uh, I want you to focus on. Let's start with like Barry Oaks. <laughs> Barry Oaks. So look, um, Bar- Barry O has had so much abuse thrown at it. Um and and I kind of get it right because who the hell is Barrio right? Um, I know him because it was my favorite game, still is, and it's kind of in the shot there. Bram Stoker's Dracula, I love that game. Yeah, love and, it. and you know, I, I, there's some games of his that I like, some games not so much. But like like any any designer uh, except Pat Lawler, he's never made a great game except that one in. But um, so. <laughs> But um, he's gonna give you stick for that. I have to say, I played Barrio. Actually, I played it um in Chicago last year. I played the Whitewood. I was under NDA. I wasn't allowed to say anything. Okay. Uh, and I knew it was coming, and I, and I and I knew it was going to be called barbecue. And I, I like I, when I heard it. And you didn't say some of that point for I, the last I, I, I the said, food. I, I said, <laughs> well, actually, I'll be honest with you. I kind of thought it might have just been a code name. Oh, okay. So I kind of said barbecue, interesting theme choice. That like, I left it right because like you're in um, David, sure. Hicks, who's such a nice guy. He's kind enough to to spend time with us, take us around the, around the factory, go through a whole lot of signing NDAs stuff. That he doesn't have to do. He does not have to do any of that, right? No, of course he doesn't. No. And um, you know you don't want to go in, in his house and piss in it, right? So. Um, sure, that makes sense. But, yeah, but I did. I did kind of think. I mean, there was a few of us looking at each other, thinking, "Really?" But then I kind of thought, "Now nah, it's going to be a code name." There's, you know, what could barbecue? I was trying to think of the things that, you know, like it could relate to. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, and then, <laughs> and then they announced something like, "Oh my god!" Um, but I'm going to tell you, I think it shoots really nicely, right? Everyone says that. <laughs> I mean, I tell you what. If that's a good contender for a re-theme. I, I, do you know what? If that game goes cheap enough, I get. It. I find it sometime in the future. I might re well, it. So it's got a lot of great potential. I think it's got huge potential as a tournament game. There was one issue with it that Dave was was was. You know, I gave him some feedback on it, which was after a while the flippers made it really hard to get the this this shot where the spinners are this ramp shot, right. Uh, it was really, it, you could still hit it, but you had to be spot on. And I said, "Man, you could do with fixing that." And he's like, "Yeah, we're going to take a look at it." Um, <clears throat> but I thought it was a great game. It's got some great mechs in it. It's a real. I mean, if you're, you know, if you are a a fan of Barry O's, it's got a lot of his. It's got a lot of takes on his designs in different games. Yeah. Um and. You know, as a commercial endeavor, you know, it's it's a tough one, I think. Um, but they're only doing a limited number of them. Um Oh yeah, that's true. I, Actually, they're I gonna think, become super rare at this point. I think it's you know, I, I I've got a, I kinda hope and, and actually I still believe this at GTF. I thought GTF shot really nicely as well. Yeah, there was some the issue with the drop targets was they weren't going down. So when you'd hit them Oh, it does that thing where they stay, yeah, they spring because yeah, so, there's too so, much tension. Yeah, so you, you know, you're just the springs on, and again, this annoys me. Uh, my Pulp Fiction's done it. My, um, uh, I think that's why Stern don't put top uh, targets in. Honestly, I think they just uh, use those stand-up targets. Basically, it's but, got drops in it, and it's it does it with that. It, it, even my Deadpool kind of, I mean, you can adjust the springs and you fix it. It's like almost instant fit, yeah. but. I look at TNA. I never had a brick shot on a, on my TNA ever because they they dialed it in right. So, sure. Um, <clears throat> they anyway, are they, finicky. They really are. Um, I also played Scooby Doo and uh, TCM Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'd say I really like Looney Tunes. Oh, not Scooby Doo, Looney Tunes. Um, Looney yeah. Tunes. I'd say I really like Looney Tunes. Um, except and and as a video of this on my YouTube channel, I'm playing it. And I'm really enjoying it. 
and the ball drains and the game loses its state. And I'm ah, just, it crashed. That is why. No, it didn't crash. It just got totally confused. And I, I pinged the, the one of the the um, spooky guys, and he just thought, oh yeah, turn it off and on. <laughs> and um, I'm like, hmm. That's why I don't buy spooky games. Uh, it just so we had this with touch wood, right? I, I, my Rick and Morty code wise is it's flawless. <laughs> See, Rick and Morty for me is a Scott Denesi game, not a spooky game. Yeah, I can, I can, I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Um, they might have built it, but he designed it. And I just the spooky games, um, I mean, the, the it's such a beautiful looking pinball machine looney tunes um it looks awesome and i'm a big fan i like the artwork i think it actually looks there is there is there is the comedy factor in it as well uh, yeah. and i would buy it but i'm not going to spend forever fucking about with it to make sure it works we had, we had this alice cooper honest to god man if alice cooper had come into the pinball club i would have shot him for the amount of effort that we had to put in to keep that game running. I, I I won a competition on it with 84 million that I'm convinced was a malfunction. I even said it. I said, guys, I, I don't know what I did to hit that, but I'm not yeah. sure it was me playing. I think some something triggered. Like a, tr a switch kept firing yeah, off or something. Or something like that. I, I, it was weird, right? And I'm like, I mean, I was happy. Oh, yeah, like, I've got no idea how to play this game, but I got 80 million, which is a big score on that game. Um, I just no, nah, I just don't want to. And and this is the thing, like with a star or a GGP or or pulp or CGC. And actually, the the thing that's amazing on uh, Cactus Canyon is the menu system. Um, I don't know. Oh if yeah, you, diagnostics. Yeah, but, yeah. Diagnostics. You can actually me They've actually got a, a um, timer on when you hit the flipper and when the EOS hits. It's like they time it. It's and there's like a little graph. So you yeah, can get one flipper to another. You can dial it in. Yeah, yeah. Like what? So because I had a I had an issue with my, my um one of the flippers on my uh, cactus was a bit lower, um and it, it was taking longer and I was I, you could feel it when you were flipping it wasn't lower it was you feel it what was wrong with it it was an easy fix there was something stuck in it um there's some i think it was a bit of a cable tie was had got wedged in it i pulled out and it was fixed but just being able to see that on the screen i'll try and take the a visual photo. delay yeah but honestly i mean and sadly pulp fiction doesn't have it because it doesn't have a screen but it's got all the other diagnostics that you can see because it's a cgc um architected game but I was yeah. super impressed by that, but you know, it, it, with spooky games, they just don't have diagnostics in them. Even even the Scott Denesi ones, he's put some stuff in, but like, if you're trying to find a stuck on switch in in a spooky game, it's a freaking nightmare. Um, yeah. You've literally got to go, you know. Whereas on a on a Stern or a even a Williams game, you can kind of see it. You know, it it, it stands out. What I still find it really weird actually when you look at a Stern, and they. They have that kind of era that, like, it's still like a DMD menu. Yeah, and and uh, you know they're slowly moving away from that. But you know, yeah. look, I'm kind of to some extent, I'm kind of with them on it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, yeah, oh no, it's fine. It just it, you can definitely it's tell it's the it older interface. Yeah, yeah. it's weird when you see it. Like, it still looks like a DMD on a on a massive LCD screen, and then you've got you know JGP where you literally get pictures of the. You know the the play field. The entire play field. Yeah, uh, which, again, it actually highlights cool. you when when you're running a spinner and it will go into color to say this is the switch. Yeah, that's yeah. Being activated. it's, it's crazy very, detail. It's very good. Um, I kind of wish to do less of that and finish their games, but um, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Like I was listening to Buffalo Pinball podcast and he was talking about uh, his pirate. number one game, Pirates, yeah. and I was just like, I couldn't disagree with you. I know any further that. if I tried. So Nick, uh, Nick and, and um, Kevin, they're, they're great guys. I, I know them well. I, I actually haven't seen them for a while since, actually since COVID. But actually, Nick was over here. We, he came one of our uh, tournaments. Um, great guys, but on Pirates, I agree with you. I just I don't know what where their love is. They did the initial, they did the original unlaunching stream. At, at, I think that's what it is. Those rose tinted goggles for me. They've got that kind of that nostalgia. Yeah. I mean, Kevin's a, 
Kevin's a big JGP fan. He's not. He's not. He doesn't play stone games. Whereas Nick's a bit more balanced. Both great players as well. I used to see them at Pinburg. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I went on and said <laughs> I posted on. I, I, I caught the tail end of it, and I posted like I couldn't disagree more. This is a terrible game. Not finished. Built quality terrible and boring yeah. rule set from Kiefer. But um, and not to mention, like I know people don't really talk about it, but. There's no actors in the assets. Yes. They can get signed off from Disney. So it's kind of like well, all you've got well, is a picture they, of somebody opening a door or, or yeah, a picture of a boat. It's not, that, it's not that they couldn't get signed off, is that they didn't want to pay for it. That's the difference. Ah, okay. Right? Um and, and also in Pinball, why do you want to get a menu of 50 characters that you can choose? How yeah, do you, crazy you, player you, selection. So manic, it's like what? And yeah. they Bar- should have kept oh. it to like the big like captains and that's it. Do you know what I mean? Like Barbosa, yeah, Jack the main, Sparrow, main players, like the ten the ten main players. That's all you needed, right? Uh yeah. even that I would say is too uh, too much. Um but so well, too many like turtles should have just been <laughs> four or six, something yeah, like that. Exactly. Um so loved uh Looney Tunes, shame about the build quality. Liked Barrios, played more Elton John. That's just such a good game. JGP have nailed it finally. Everyone uh, keeps saying it. Yeah, I think that is their, probably their best game, right? I, I think if you, so the guys, I'll let them speak for themselves. But I think we were kind of we went out for a for a lunch on the Sunday before we all started to head home, and I think the the, the takeaway game from the show was was definitely uh, Elton John. They were they were kind of surprised. Nice. Uh, also Venom. They were pretty positive about Venom and, and Jaws. I, say, I, I played it around yours. I think Venom gets a real hard rap. I yeah, really enjoy it. I, I think it's a great game. I think um, is is it? You know, I, I saw some bozo post like, "Oh, Venom's the most stripped down game I've ever seen." Like, okay, what about the gameplay? And th- and this goes back to the, the theme thing, right? Theme and what the what you see tr- when you're ordering a game. You know, well, well, I don't see anything on this. So why am I paying all this money? And the theme, you know, I love it or I hate it. And then, so you end up like with a game like Barrios that could be a great player, but no one will touch it because it doesn't have a theme. And when I look at it, I don't know what's there. It does look like there's a lot there, yeah. So for me, my decision is ball and flippers. Like, I'm playing this game. Do I like playing it? Do I want to come back? If I was on location, would I be sticking my dollar bills into this game, right? Yeah. And 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 if that's the case, then then it's a game for me. I mean, it's rare these days that I play a, buy a game that I haven't played. Um, You're lucky though. I mean, you can travel to these places yeah. where you can try them. I no, think absolutely. for the majority of people in this country, at least in the UK, it's more like, "Am I going to take a punt on this?" That's well, that what means- the majority of the reality is. I mean, that's what Paul was and, and Colin was saying in the last one is they were going to they would be at TPF a year after the big release. And they hadn't played any of the games that had come out yet. You know, they yeah. hadn't played Pulp Fiction. They hadn't played um, Venom. Um, a Jaws as well, by the way. Um, you know, this is going to cause chaos for some people. The premium is the game to buy. I know it's more money, but honestly, it's such a much better game. Um, actually, is that my, because of the upper play field? Or the upper play field makes all the difference to this game. Anyone who says otherwise is talking utter nonsense. I'm sorry, but and again, ask the you know I, I predict this is something that comes up when we get the guys on. Um, the difference is just insane. Um, it just change it changes the like Godzilla Premium Pro. Whatever the the games aren't that different, right? You got this building sure. up down, down that's cool, but the gameplay is almost identical. Jaws, nah, it's a it's almost a totally different game, and the game is so much better. Um, and the shark doesn't eat the ball, but no one cares. Um, so you know I, I, that was that was um great. The other thing that was that was there from Stern, they had the Foo Fighters topper, which I've now got. I think they didn't have them at the show, annoyingly. Uh, they just have prototype. How much was that topper? <laughs> it was it was more <laughs> stupid money. Um, but it... I think I, I yeah. Look, Neil, you're definitely not the type of person that would shy away from buying an expensive toy. But holy crap, man! I'm fairly certain that's an expensive it was topper. Too grand. It's um, too much money. So no, much no, money. you're right. It is. It's stupid money, but it's 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 basically and also 
a lot of it's a reuse of the Black Knight topper, the head moving around. Oh, so it's the animatronics from the head. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and actually, it's pr- they've done a pretty. They, they've added a lot more to it. Is it two grand's worth? Hell no. Um, no. Well, if they could, you know, as you say, back in the day, they did the Black Knight topper for five hundred. Well, that's it. I, I'm my Black Knight. Actually, my I Black was going to ask you nice. this. Yeah. I completely forgot. Did you fill in the questionnaire that came from Stern? Did you get asked to fill it in? I don't think I got asked for it, but I get so many. It took emails. me an hour and a half. <laughs> It was really? so long. Yeah, there's so many questions. So many questions. It's but it, it's intriguing to see what... Well, I'll tell you the stuff they asked, which is really interesting. It's all about subscription models. What would you want to pay if you basically were paying a monthly fee and what would you want to get as part of that monthly fee? They were talking about like, you know, having elements where you could actually do your own content creation and help with assisting with the game code design, stuff like that. There was like, there was stuff and questions around like, you know, what features would you want to see um, as part of the ongoing life cycle of the game? So a bit almost like, you know, like they do in games for PC, well, video games is called yeah, that, yeah. where it's like um, live service. I think they use the phrase. Yeah. And, you know, you pay a monthly fee and they keep adding to it. I honestly think Stern is trying to do that. Given by what I had to answer in that questionnaire, they are looking at a method to say, if you pay a subscription, you'll get these features unlocked. So so um, they're dead. Let me tell you, they're dead unless it's things that you don't already get. So sure. if they're going to charge you for stuff that you've already, already been getting, they're dead. And Disney right now is seeing... You look at Disney subscriptions, Disney Plus. Disney uh, Plus, yeah. You look actually. You look at all those subscription services; they are all nose diving um, sure. because people aren't seeing the value. If if uh, if Stern um, and this is a business that I've been in, the mobile phone business where it's all about subscriptions. Sure. The minute customers do not perceive value, you're screwed. I mean, it, it's it's literally like. You know, you're drinking champagne and you're buying um, Rolexes because your business is doing so well. And then the day that they realize there's no value, you're literally on eBay trying to sell everything for 10 pence because your world is that brutal. And if Stern go down this path, uh, which I I actually don't believe they'll ever do. That's my take. I think... It was a long survey. I, well, I suppose they'll get the feedback that they need from. Well, this, this, right? this. I mean, it's good that they're asking rather than just doing. First off, yeah. Um, I, I think they would be absolutely freaking crazy to do it because for two reasons. One, the negativity on pinball, pinball pricing right now is on another level from when it's ever been. Um, I mean, everyone, the only things people talk about constantly is the price. I mean, all through TPF. It was mentioned in the questionnaire. Yeah. They were like, you know, what would you, you know, they ask about your, they ask a lot of stuff, actually. They asked about, like, you know, what you earn in a living for your family. What you, you know, if you buy a new game, what makes you make those decisions to buy that game? And how many new, new box games have you got? Stuff like that is very much driven around like your purchasing, basically. Yeah, and 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 I mean, there's another company that's tried to go down this path, BMW, where they were trying to, you know, they they'd they'd fully spec a car. You didn't pay for it, but if you wanted like heated seats, you paid three quid a month. And and it just there's there's a mode. Where, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Mode, well, they've done it. They're still trying to. I know it's it's still it. crazy. Yes, yeah, I blame Tesla for that. But. There's, there is one thing I'd say about that, though. In fleets, I think that's a valuable thing because if you get a company car, quite often you don't get a choice on the spec. Um, and all of a sudden, wait a minute, I can subscribe to this and I've suddenly got this thing that I couldn't have got because I get given a car. So I, there, there's there's a mode of operation for that that I think works. Unfortunately, BMW... That, I think that's more down to that, I suppose, as you say. Are they wanting car owners to move into a subscription model where they don't even own the car anymore <laughs> well if they yeah i mean it's it's like transport as a service is what, what you know I, yeah. I call it. but look, I, this subscription model thing i think there's a because the stock market loves it um oh yeah it's recurring revenue isn't it there's like a panic to get into that model but look let me tell you right bmw owners typically buy a car if you look at 
if you kind of dig into it, and I'm a unashamed BMW owner. You know, we buy a new car every four or five years, so there's the, the recurring revenues there. And most most of the time, most people will finance it, so they're making good money on interest, way more than they're going to make sure. a proposal subscription service. Um, it's low risk for them because uh, if if you if they you, you don't pay the credit, they just take the car off you. And they can sell the car and recover the credit. So. You know, I, I kind of question the the thinking um, of some of these organizations. But, look, I think experimentation, you've got to experiment. You've got to try new shit for sure. Um, but, Stern, if you're planning to sub put people so that they have to subscribe to stuff that they're already used to getting, forget it. Um, there'll be a, Don't get me wrong. There will be a novelty period where people like it. But over time, they'll think, well, wait a minute. I can watch Doctor Who on BBC for nothing. Um, you know, I can watch all this stuff on ITV for nothing. And if you look at the, if you look at what's been happening in TV, there is definitely a resurgence of people who are watching subscription-based stuff versus people who've gone gone back to kind of linear stuff. Because actually, the one good thing that Netflix and those guys have done is they've made these lazy people in in the and the big TV companies get off their ass and create proper TV shows again. Um, Cause there was a bit of, Oh, let's do love Island series 400. Right. Yeah. It's just the same iteration, isn't it? It's yeah. just absolute cheap nonsense TV. Right. So in some ways that's good, but let's finish off on TPF. Um, there's one big section on TPF. I'll just introduce it here and we'll, uh, and we'll talk more about it um, with the guys, but, the best part about TPF, the homebrew section, by a mile, right? Yeah, everyone talks about that. Crazy good homebrews <laughs> as well. So there's so many great games. Motorhead, amazing game. Uh, I loved playing it. I would buy that game. Um, Eight Ball Beyond, we've seen before, but I, I had a chance to properly play it. Last time it was, you just couldn't get near it. Um, it is a, an amazing game. I actually managed to play it before the show opened so you can actually hear it. The music and the audio, we were talking about audio before, mm -hmm. uh, is fantastic. I would buy that game. Uh, right away, I would buy that game. Um, Friday the 13th, um, it, it, I would buy that. Saw, um, it was interesting, but it was you could tell it was a bit of a whirlwind remake. Um, as soon as I... I didn't initially notice it, but as soon as I did, all I could see was whirlwind. But the concepts and some of the things they had on it were really cool. Um, there's a bunch of other, um, you know, free, um, um, sorry, homebrew games. I need honestly, Scott. The thing that, that I was amazed by was if you weren't a pinball person, like you just a bozo off the street. Um, you'd never know that these weren't made by manufacturers. They were so good, you know. That yeah, I noticed. Yeah. It wasn't like a white. What was your view on that Mech Warrior game where they had a guy playing with a control <laughs> pad and another one playing single player, so they could show yeah. up a play field co-op? So look, I, I, I'm a Mech Warrior fan from when I loved Mech Warrior loved as a kid. Game. By the way, I um, absolutely bloody loved that. So, that was and actually, so that was there. I had a good play. I didn't play it this year because. Because I played it a lot last year, I was impressed by it. I thought the guy had done a great yeah. job. I'll be honest with you though, the software in that game was a bit finicky. Um, it wasn't clean. It's definitely better this year, I think. But um, again, as a as a home game, I think I I can't see it doing well in on location. But as a home game, I could see that um definitely working. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm always a bit yeah, I'm always a bit nervous with. With homebrew games, in fact, I had a bit of a, a disagreement with a guy on Pinside where, you know, so there's certain IPs that I really value. Actually, ABBA, which we'll talk about shortly. I'm a massive ABBA fan. I love disco. Uh, my wife's been to see the ABBA show about a hundred times. Um, yet, you know, and when I hear someone's doing ABBA pinball machine, it freaks me out because I'm like, oh, they're gonna fuck this up, right? Um, sure. Are they going to give it the the kind of effort that's required? Are they are they going to pulp fiction it, um, or are they going to try to think of a terrible, um, or, or are they going to um, Stranger Things it right? To you know, don't get me wrong, Stranger Things is a great. Stranger, I was going to say I like Stranger Things. Oh, it's a great game, but in terms of use of IP, it's terrible. 
right? Or actually, the yeah, better I'll give you that. Choice, yeah, better choice is Star Wars, right? So f- f- parks, Stranger Things. Are they going to do Pulp Fiction, where it's like just such a great use of the theme? Or are they going to do Star Wars, where it's shit, right? And again, the Star Wars game is not a bad game, but the use of the theme as a Star Wars fan is abysmally shocking, in my view. Um, and it, you know, as a as a fan, I get frustrated with shit like that. Um, it would so, be quite easy for me to do the Star Wars game. One word: magnets. Yeah. <laughs> the force you know what i mean it's just like oh my god it's so obvious yeah people don't and, and, don't and even they don't do it. You know, mandalorian's the best star wars game what do they use they use a couple of magnets in it you know it's simple things like that mm-hmm. but the the uh, i don't know the the um so with abba you know i just looked at it and thought my god i was disappointed that Pulp oh, Fiction, what? sorry, Pimble Brothers had gone from a music pin that hadn't sold well to another music pin. I was just like, I, I, I was hoping to God it really wasn't because I looked at that that helicopter and I was like, I saw what it could be and I thought, well, mash. Yeah, I was, really I was great. When I saw the helicopter, being an ABBA fan, I was pretty convinced that they they were doing ABBA at that stage, but. Right. I, I'm not that much into ABBA, so I didn't really understand why the helicopter was so symbolic. I know it's on the album art, but I didn't know yeah. it was like I mean, but elsewhere. You'd, if unless you're an ABBA fan, you'd never have got it. So I've got, right. well, I've got, we've got the original. I think. Album. Don't get me wrong. The mech's impressive. I mean, that's a new mech and it looks good. I thought they'd done all right on it, but I looked at the game oh, and no. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, there's a big helicopter in the middle of the game, and uh, what else? Yeah, not I mean, a lot. I, I, I don't know. Like, no, 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 hundred percent. So, Luke, this I is... compare it to Owen John. I think they're really up against it. It's the worst time to release a yeah. music pin when exactly. you've got Elton John taking the limelight. Not only that, this is the thing, and actually, I'd say this. In some ways, they're lucky because these are two kind of well-known European. I mean, Elton John's a bit more global, but Abba's not super global. They're not. Yeah. They're not massive in the US. Don't Much wrong, bigger in oh, Europe than I'd say in America. They're huge and yeah, they're, they're doing eight hundred. Um, they're only doing eight hundred, and I'm like, how did they make? How did they put all the effort in designing a game like that? Um, only do eight hundred. Yeah. Only do eight hundred. I just, I'm like, what? Um, so, look, I, I, I watched the, I've watched videos of it. It looks underwhelming to me. Um, and I kind of. I look at the state of Pinball Brothers with, you know, lots of changes and, you know, I kind of think it's a brave person that buys that game. Um, I have to say it's, it's, and, and look, there's, you know, there's a couple of fans on, on Pinball Info that are like super excited about it. Of course, when your title comes out. Uh, yeah, if it's your Holy Grail theme, yeah, right? I, I mean, let, like... me, let me take Mandalorian, right? I was like super excited about that, but it's not a great game. Um, no, I can tell in the resale market because it struggles. It really. I, struggles. I would have. I would have, if, if it wasn't for the fact that it was Mandalorian. I would have sold my LE. I'll buy it. if it was like if that was like I don't know, you know, little dwarf pinball. Um, it it would have gone. It, it just it just isn't a good enough game. I like it. It's fun, but it's it for again for an IP of that level, they blow it basically. So, um, in terms of what. I expect is a great game. Um, it just doesn't. It doesn't. It just doesn't do well enough. Um, let's we're, we're conscious of time. Let's let's ro- kind of drive through. So we want to talk. So we'll do more on TPF in the second part of this. The second hand market, reality versus reality. Um, I just I kind of I don't know really where to go on this, but well, for me, like. Coming from a perspective of somebody joined Pinball during the height of COVID, um, I definitely feel prices are coming down a lot. I know you feel like the bottom's not there yet. For me, I'm just surprised to see so many nice-looking titles, as in good condition. may not be like popular ones, but in, in our country, at least, we're getting titles through like Champion Pub at 4K, which... (laughs) <laughs> it's a rare t- it's a rare game it's WPC95 I, I, I'm glad I didn't see it because I was busy in the garden otherwise I probably would have <laughs> with some money um, the 
I saw it too late. It's probably more accurate. But the um, other one I think I saw recently was a junkyard. And again, it was a good condition game. The pictures were really nice and no one's touching it. And I'm like, it, back in COVID, that would have been snapped up because it, it, it's a really good example of that game. But I've noticed now, if, if the game <laughs> isn't a good title, it doesn't really matter what the price is. It, people aren't buying. Yeah, I mean, Junkyard and Champion Pub, probably two of the worst WPC games. Uh, yeah, they're the B list. For me, for me they're the three. Board. They're three grand games. They've always they've been three grand forever. Uh, yeah. Covid, they were going for stupid money, but I think anyone buy. I mean, four four grand. You you know, worst case, you lose five hundred quid maybe on it. Um, maybe a bit more, but um, those games just. They're just not worth it, basically. Um, and you know, there's, there's unfortunately there's a bunch of people who bought games at the peak either through either through the forum or through some dealers who think I've got a lot, lot. Of, they're gonna dealers that think, oh yeah, I'm gonna sell this game I bought for four grand. I'm gonna sell it for eight. Um, they think they're making money, and here's what they're doing: they're killing the market. Um and they need you know they need to tread carefully. Short term gains, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I've made money now, but the fact is, is everyone gets so turned off by how expensive it is. I'm not going to buy anything, right? And I know that was one of the, the themes from the guys at TPF. You know, pretty much all of them were out of buying new in box because you buy a game, you know, a pro for eight grand, and you're lucky if you get six back for it. Um, a premium LE even yeah. more, right? Um. And, but, you know, there's still this, there's the, you know, look, folks, if you buy a new game, um, I'm just going to make these numbers up. Say you buy, I don't know, a Deadpool for 7,500 new from Phil, right? And I think he was doing them for 7,500, right? Maybe, uh, yeah. The chance of you getting 7,500 for that game, no matter what you do to it, even if you got Deadpool himself to piss on it, <laughs> you're not gonna get seventy five hundred when you're gonna sell it, and and look, you know, um, if you're buying a new game, in fact, if you're buying any game, folks, for the love of God, plan to lose money on it. And if you don't want to lose that money, don't buy the fucking game, um, because I, I don't buy a new box. Yeah, I see, mean, I learned that the hard way. I lo I lost like, what was it, three grand on Elvira, yeah. and I see these people putting up their like premiums, and I'm like, you you like putting up for like a 500 loss i'll be honest with you i'm amazed anybody wants to pay 500 pounds less versus a new box for exactly like exactly so and and they don't that's what happens unless you know virus maybe a title is all about timing but for me elvira now there's so many of them you know if you just wait you'll get one at the price you want <laughs> um yeah. I've, that's why I've known, I've, i'm doing now it's like i'm not doing what i used to do which was impulse buy yeah, I used to just be like, yeah. yeah, you impulse by in pinball, you're gonna, you're it's, gonna sting yourself. You, you make, you know, if you're look, if you're after pinball machines, right, make a list, and also make sure you've played those games because I see people like, oh, well, you know, I and you're you're a great example, Cactus Canyon. Um, yeah, get it. You buy it new, you get it. You think this game sucks, and um, and then you sell it, right? And that is an expensive thing to do. Make sure you really have played a game. And when I say played a game, it's not like two games. You've got to have played it 10 or 15 times. And again, if you haven't played a game a lot, right, there's a chance, a very strong chance, even though it's your dream theme, right? Oh, my God, I've been waiting for Foo Fighters forever. There's a very good chance, if you haven't played it, that you might not like it as a game. Yeah, that's true. You like the music, you like the theme, Oh, this game shit, man. It's too hard. Like Pulp Fiction, I think is going to be one that that, that might that might have that because it's a tough game. But plan to to for that that eventuality again. If you can, if you've got a, you're in a situation where now nah, I can't take a spang of three grand, don't fucking buy the game. Just don't. There's this is yeah. the, this is the joyous thing about pinball. There are so many amazing games out there. You've got a choice. Be patient think before you spend and and you've got these people that rush out and try and grab onto shit ah there's a ghostbusters it's up for eight grand it's a fucking six grand game and it's not even a great game yeah it's got the theme and it's got 
This man has no dick. I think that would be the thing, right? They get it. And they're like, yeah, I've chased it. I've gone off to my holy grail. And then they play it, and it's straight down the middle, straight down the middle, straight down the middle. And then we'll get to a position where they'll be like, okay, I've, I've, I've actually lost the love for that game because I, it's I, frustrating. I, same, I mean, I, Ghostbusters was the first new inbox I bought. And after originally playing it, and then I, well, after I played it, and, and this is the thing, I thought I knew the game. Because I played yep. it a handful of times in Chief Coffee. Big shout out to Sam. Um, who runs Chief Coffee in Lyon, London. Um, I thought I played that game enough to know it, and I hadn't, basically. And and then they promised this code update, which they delivered eventually. But at the end of the day, the, the ball and flipper game was the same game. Okay, the the, the DMD did different stuff, and there different modes, and they fixed a load of shit. Um, but it was still the same ball and flippers with that straight down the middle, and that... And, basically a thousand ball saves because the kickouts were so bad that they all went down the middle. It just just wasn't a great game. So um do you think that this will apply pressure to anybody in the new inbox? So we're talking like the manufacturers when they're seeing a downward spiral in the second hand market, are we going to see a price adjustment in the new sales as well? Because that it must be affecting sales. It's hard to see that happening. I mean for me, the signal for that was Labyrinth. Right. So Labyrinth comes out, and a, an easy way that they could have, you know, sold tons of them was to price it at like nine grand. And they yeah, did. True. They priced it at ten and a half, right? And the minute I saw that ten and a half price, my take was is actually their cost base is in a position where they have to sell it at that price. And I don't see enough happening in the cost base to warrant manufacturers reducing prices. And I tell you what I don't want is them taking stuff out any taking any more out of games. Um, yeah. Well I mean it is getting to a point if the cost base keeps going up, it's gonna to get to a position where people just as you say will be put off because the price of new inbox is too high. Well then then I think, you know, Luke um, and when we, that spells the end of pinball, no, absolutely, you know what I mean? like, like, Luke, absolutely. I th you know, th this is why Luke does a does a price change have to come along at some point in time, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's hard to see next year, you know, in January, where we get the email saying Stern have put the prices up. I think that'll just be red rag to a bull, basically. Um, mm -hmm. I, I actually I've got a plan on, you know, I, I think part in the UK where. We have a the channel that we get to, particularly on Stern Games, is not price sent, price friendly for us, and I think there's a correction that needs to happen there. Um, and um, you know, you, you, again, you see, I, I can't remember what the price for Pulp Fiction was, but I think it was was it nine and a half, um, the original price for an SE. I can't remember. Um, let's have a look. I mean, I know for a fact that the margins the people making the country here for reselling pinball machines is at a position where it's easier just to do a couple of days work you know on call outs than it is to sell one pinball machine oh, absolutely. margins are thin margins are, are, are thin and you can see um, you know Phil's been selling games at literally at cost price from staff. yeah, he's, he, I think he's taking probably a, a guess volume over over profit here. But yeah, but but and but, it, but the thing is, is he's running around like a headless chicken for no money. It's like Phil, are you mental? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I well, it goes back to as you say, like the, the, our conditions are different because we've got effectively a middleman. Um, but I don't know. I I I don't. I, mean, I don't feel confident that new inbox is is got a, you know if it keeps going up, I don't think it's got a future in this country. I in the well, UK, I mean, there's I, some people buying them. I mean, I, I think end of this year we'll we'll, we'll be telling because um, you know you hear Zach many on on his pinball podcast. And he says it's, you know it's been the best year yet in terms of sales. Is that and the question is is okay that was last year. Is that sustainable through this year? Where the prices have gone up even more. I mean, Pulp Fiction this is the thing, right? You can get a Pulp Fiction for the same price as a Stern Pro. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt. That's a different, or... different build, <laughs> a different build oh. game. Um, and and even yeah, they, they don't have the LE price, but 
um, you know, eight two nine five for for you know a completely different. Le- I mean, it does a different level of quality. I, um, I'm not having to go to Stern by saying that, but it, it it's it's the reality, right? Um, mm-hmm. it's you know, and then and then you got Labyrinth, which again is pretty decent. I think they've still got probably a little set of improvements to make for the same price as a as a premium. Um, you know, and and in my mind, you know, they all, you know, I'll be honest with you, 10 grand is a real psychological marker, especially when you're selling second hand. No, ab- absolu- ab- no, absolutely. I felt as like, I sound like a broken record, but for me, that was if I sold Elvira for trying to sell it, say for a grand less than I bought it, or two grand less than I bought it, it was still 11k at two grand less. Yeah. So people were in their heads going, that's a lot okay. of money for a second hand yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, you got Halloween for eight and a half. Oh, that's a terrible game. Don't buy it. Um, sorry, fool. <laughs> um, <laughs> Looney, Looney Tunes. I mean, this is the thing, right? So Looney Tunes, um, you know, the 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 standard is not is is that nine and a half. I mean, as much as you might disagree with it, I think to be honest with you, the best value proposition recently was the Ripley edition from Pinball Brothers. Yeah, but but I mean, you got to bear in mind, right? They had zero cost of putting that game together. In what way? In the in the way that they got the whole game for nothing because of Highway. Highway did all the work on it. Oh, I see what you mean. Research and development, then. Yeah. yeah okay. So, so they had. So, no, but yeah, but they're still paying for licensing. They still got the bill of materials for actual parts and everything like that. I still think that it, I think it's a hard thing to compare. I mean, look at Abba now; they're selling it for more than ten grand. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I'll give you that. So I, I kind of feel that that's a, a one up. But the Bloodsucker edition, so the the LE of Looney Tunes is 10, 10 and a half grand. You know, I, when I look at the pricing now, and I mean, the, the only one that, that's that's over the top for sure is JGP. I mean, they, they've totally lost the plot on pricing, if you ask me. Um, the people that started the whole price hike in the first place. I mean, yeah, but, they, and, but again, why but, I mean, back then, pirates. I mean, look, I know we don't. We both agree it's not a great game, but mech, well, mech wise, holy crap, that's impressive. The ship, yeah. super impressive. <clears throat> like they had a lot in it. They do pack their games. I just think where they fail is on their code and on their music and yeah. on their assets in terms of videos. Godfather, like thirteen grand. No one's paying that for a Godfather. Oh, yeah. You'd have to be insane to buy a Godfather. DNA, DNA is 10 grand mine's cost six yeah um, you know it, it, i you don't know. really understand why a tna rerun costs more as well when the cost is you say they're sunk at that point uh it's it, i mean the price of timber just for the cabinet is like almost two and a half times what it was so i there's some there's definitely some inflationary pressure um i think the question is is how do they go out and challenge their cost base, the supply into their cost base, mm. so that you know the materials, you know, aren't as expensive. How do they make their staff more efficient? Because they're obviously pretty sure over the last two years with inflation, they've all had a pay rise, right? Um, you know, people say, "Oh, this is greed and cash grabs." Yeah, there's definitely they've done cash grabs. Star- standard bond. That thing that you uh, bought up there, yeah. I'm pointing at your uh, topper, yeah, is top- a cash <laughs> grab. <laughs> no one needs to buy any of that, though, right? I think the majority of people don't know. You're right. No you, you, it's just the it. Rolex buyers, as I call them. Oh, you're right. And and uh, although Rolex, you've got more chance of getting your money back. But um, True. Um, yeah. So, so Luke, folks, if you can't afford... It's almost like gambling, right? If you can't afford to lose the money, don't make the bet. Um, yeah. And also, Definitely. if you put your game up, I, 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 if, if I see someone who's put a game up that's ridiculously overpriced, I'm calling it out. And I'm doing but that. But you would if you weren't banned. Well, I, I do it wherever <laughs> I can. I do it wherever I can. Like a 10 grand medieval madness. I pity the fool that bought that. I genuinely. I, do you know what, Lerner? I, I know you like Kirk and everything and, and Steve I think it's Steve Paget, right? Yeah. Uh who whose games it was. I'm sorry, but whatever sucker put that bloody medieval madness 
oh my god, that play field was absolutely wrecked. Right. Like that was roached, wrecked. Like you're gonna have to spend the best part of three grand getting that looking right. And you well, are absolutely the thing is, for buying that for ten when you can get a new in box from Chicago, maybe this year, maybe next year, as a remake, sure. everything brand new. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, right? Um in some ways, the, 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 for a while, the remakes, the Medieval Madness, re- helped with mad pricing because there was a time yeah. 10 grand was the standard price for Medieval. I was like, what? Um, they did help with that, but now they've they've a victim of their own success and the, they've built such great games. No one wants to sell their Medieval Madness remake. And actually, Chris, I mean, Chris put, put Chris Brim put one up for sale. Again, I think a ridiculous price. Sorry, Chris, but... Um, that game cost six. Well, well, the original LEs cost six grand, six and a half grand when they came out. That's He's what better I, off doing what a supposedly Kirk did, which is stick it on eBay and let some some guy yeah, outside I mean, the game. You know, and that's it. the thing, right? If it, and that's I'll be honest with you. If you are trying to get cash out of your game, probably eBay is the best place to do it. Believe it or not. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. Because there's a lot more, there's a lot more stupid people there. No difference. There's a lot more suckers. Yeah. Well they're, well, they're uneducated. They're like, oh, I quite fancy a pinball machine. Buy it now. Boom, I'm off. Right? Well, yeah, they'll be like of that demographic <laughs> that probably goes. I remember seeing that game when I used to play in the arcades, and I really liked it. Oh, I mean, you never see it come up. Ten grand. That seems like a bargain. So I looked some, it up on Pinside, and it's going for like fourteen or something. You know. Some some crazy guy selling. I can't remember what it was, but he's selling. Like seven grand for a Williams WPC, and I'm like, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a good one. And I was like, mate, are you joking? And on, you know, if I can call it out, I'm calling it out. Um, no, I, I did the thing. I was good. I didn't say a thing on the forum post. I just for if I got anything good to say, I won't say it because here call, I can. I it's my call platform. It out <laughs> mental if you buy this, but I mean, look, it, um. And like someone's bought it, so I don't know. So I, I, I don't know. Supposedly, to... I mean, I, look, I, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put any down in people's mind. When someone says, "Oh, it's gone," I've seen people do that before, and then miraculously it shows up three months later because they go, "Oh, the deal fell through." Yeah, so, or uh, or the guy selling it for less money. Like there's a, there's a, a, there's a, in my mind, a pretty expensive theater magic up for sale right now. Is that fact? I think there's a couple of them. Um, it's yeah, a, been up quite a few recently. Four, four grand game, guys. Sorry, even I mean, if I was, even though I've t- put tons of money in my theater magic, that and and my wife bought me, so I can't sell it. For, for, otherwise, I'd be shot. If I was to sell it, <laughs> selling it for four grand because that's what it's worth. And it was like, but you know, you spent all this money. I was like, yeah, but it's it's like I I could buy a a mini. I could put a turbo charger on it and super, super tires. I could paint it gold stripes. It's still a fucking mini, right? You know, it, it, and it yeah. and it's got a price. It, you know, there's a thing that's there's this aura around it. It's one of those that means it's at this price price point, and it doesn't matter if you polished it with your favorite Pampers nappy. And I put, think that you're you know, right. Every game has a, has a predefined price. ceiling. You probably underseller yeah if you put it at four i think you probably get five six maybe maybe six i'd say but like that's game. different it's a but four grand game <laughs> at a player's condition i'll give you that it's a four grand game. game it doesn't matter what condition it is it's a no condition absolutely absolutely no i disagree there condition absolutely makes a difference to price it's 500 quid different if, otherwise like i would be happy to buy a medieval madness at 10k if the play field didn't look like it just came out of a canal oh, yeah. Uh, you're right. Fair, uh, you're right. That's a fair challenge. The play f- if if you've got a fucked play field, that yeah. takes a big dollar out. Um, if you've got a good play field, because the other stuff's you know cosmetic, you can fix that, right? Yeah, a lot of people don't care about cabinet D. I field, do, but not everybody. Changing yeah. the play field is a heavy lift, right? That's why huge. That's why I get you to do mine. I get um, <laughs> yeah. Keith to do my sterns, he's doing my meteor right now. Um, but that you know, that's you know, that's a couple of grand. Um, that's why I, I always think of it as a four grand game. Um, sure, and, you know, I, I, I know that irritates the fuck out of people because like, I paid six for mine and it's worth eight. No, it's four. And, and, and the, <laughs> thing is, the thing is, is if you're patient, this is and this is the key thing, right? Yeah. Look, there's games that I've paid more than they're worth. Everyone's done it, right? I, my, I bought um, Stargazer 
and I probably paid a grand more than it was really worth because it's a rare game and this one was actually in pretty good shape um, and it was an easy transaction. Um, but if you're in that, and it's kind of a grail game for me, the Stern Classics, I'm a bit of a mug for them. I'll pay more, probably more than, than anything else, right? Guilty as charged. Um, but if you're just buying a game, you know, it's not, you know, I, I want to get Foo Fighters for a while, right? Um, you're not going to get the same money you paid for a Foo Fighters. It's just not realistic. You're in La La Land if you think that's the case. You're, you're going to buy yeah. You're at least going to lose 500 quid. And and if you don't think that, you, honestly, just just stop buying stuff because you're going to be disappointed. And and, I, and, and if you look at the forum right now... Um, well, it's the same thing with Stranger Things, right? I want to have a Stranger Things, but people want seven grand for a pro. I'm like, uh, with all due respect, you, you can buy a new in-box for that kind of money. I'm just like, I, mean, I don't want to be spending seven grand on a used pro. It's just, I, I just don't want to do it. Yeah. But this is the thing, if you wait, like there was like a couple of Mandalorians that were on the forum for like 10 grand that finally went at eight. I bought another yeah. one that wasn't on the forum. Um, I think it was for seven, seven, right? Yeah, and that was an LE. If you wait, right, these prices they will come to you. The prices will come to you. And yeah, absolutely paid about it. Well, I was offered eight and a half two months ago. I was like, Yeah, you should have fucking taken it should then. Should have taken it then, yeah. Absolutely, and and look, I'm not uh, look. No one wants people to lose money, right? But no. but you but you, you know, there's a there's a there's this re reality distortion, um, and and this is the thing, right? Oh, okay, I won't buy your, um, you know, your Deadpool for eight grand. I'm just going to import the one from Europe that's six thousand euros. I'm going to import the one from the US that's six grand dollars. I am actually seeing, do you know, that's an interesting thing you pointed out. I'm seeing a lot of price drops in Europe. Europe is, is in the toilet right now. I mean, it, it, yeah. it is. And I was seeing, I saw it like, like things like, you know, a creature for 4,000 euros. And I was like, <clears> God, I haven't seen a creature for that kind of money for a while. It's it'll like, cost you 500 to import it. Um, yeah. So I bought, I mean, I must have bought 20 games from Europe recently um and they're all you know they're all cheaper there's a, there's a bit i mean there's some people still living in la la land in, in europe as well don't get me wrong sure but, sure but it's you know just genuinely right I, i'm not I, I don't want anyone to lose any money um if you're selling a game that's overpriced i'm going to call it out because all you're doing is passing that pain on to someone else um, I'm going to tell that person, wait, buy it at the right price. Um, don't get me wrong, you buy it from a dealer and they're charging more money, you're going to get, you're not getting ripped off, right? People think, oh, they've been ripped off by this guy or this guy. No. These guys as businesses are there to make money, right? And if yeah. you buy a, a, you know, a Ghostbusters for 10 grand, because that's what X dealers selling it for they're not also dealers don't forget they're working with VAT DAT they're working with yeah so for, for you know, Americans that's basically tax but yeah. staff um you know and uh, they also, got more overheads than somebody selling it from their garage put it that yeah, way yeah <laughs> but also but also hold them to account if they said that they've done this 42 check and and the first thing you notice on the glass is a big scratch down it um I bought a game second hand Actually, my wife bought it for me, and there was this forty-two point check. Honestly, not a single one of them had been done, and I went ballistic at them because they'd rip my they'd rip my wife off. There's no question about yeah. it. Yeah, there are some shady dealers out there. Fortunately, the market's big enough now that they don't really get away with it anymore. But I think that you know, five or six years ago, it was a bit easier for them to rip people off. Yeah, when there was demand was high. Yeah. Sometimes they've got a game that you want, and it you know they they're going to warranty it, so make sure you hold them to account on it. Um, basically, so and, and look, I'm going to move on from that. Um, just, yep. and I'm just going to share a few things very quickly because we're we're way over time as per usual, as always. Um, sorry about that, guys. But um, so Pinball Republic, quick update: where um, things are moving ahead slowly, but they are moving. Um, our our lawyers and the new venue lawyers are doing the thing on contracts. 
I'm hoping that that gets signed like in the next two weeks. Then we've probably got a month of fitting out. So probably end of May, beginning of June. I hate giving out dates now because it feels like it just gets further and further, but things are moving. Yeah. But I am moving it as quickly as we can. Um, but the rest of the, the club went, to, the rest of the kind of run people who run the club went to see the venue. They were all super impressed by it. Um, so yeah, life is looking good. Um, a couple of other things there's, there's, there's obviously we're getting close to show season. So there's Swavesy pinball show, um, that's coming up. Um, it's in Cambridgeshire. It's, it's like a really kind of, uh, cool chilled out, uh, weekend. I, I, I've been meaning to go out for years and never made it. I actually made it there last year. Um, it's on the 30th of June. Um, if you want to play Pulp Fiction, my game will be there. Um, I'm taking it with me to Swayze. And then the other one I want to shout out for is uh, UK Pin Fest. Um, yes. And, and in particular, um, you know, these shows happen because people bring games to them. Um, and, you know, so... I don't know if it's the date change, but Pinfest's a week earlier. It's August 16th, 17th, and 18th, um, which is the week before it normally is. So it's normally on the bank holiday weekend. Anyway, there's less... At the moment, Phil's a bit nervous because um, he hasn't had the kind of pin donation. So what's interesting is, is the hotel's sold out. So people are clearly... That's it. The hotel's, hotel's sold out, like, literally the day <laughs> the hotel bookings were announced. So, so if you're... Look, if you are going... And you're normally a pin donator, please. Um, or you're, or you don't want to do it. Let Phil know why. You know he's he's pretty good at um sorting out any issues and looking after folks. So uh, that's it. Well, I'm bringing I'm bringing my cyberpunk, and I don't know what else I'm going to bring. So there's one other game I'm going to bring. I'll figure out what the hell that is closer to the I'm, day, but I'm committed to. Then I'm bringing uh, Pulp Fiction, and I'm bringing James Bond 60th. They're both, I think, going to be that's in nice. The tournament um i think um so yeah please um you know show up to those shows because they're, they're, they're great. yeah and look, donate i think we're we're somewhere around for the main lobby area we're sitting around 67 titles right and we're normally at 100 at this point 100, yeah so we're, we're yeah, about 40 games i mean i i can bring more games um if if need be but um to uh, it just I'll be honest with you, the thing I hate is, is I hate driving a fucking van. Um, yeah, I do too. Like, yeah. I, I try to keep myself to a transit. If I have to go into Luton territory, I'm only going to be doing that when I have to move. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. So, if, if I, you know, yeah. if I get three games in a transit, that'll be it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, as I said, if it just takes a couple of the key people from the from the UK community just to kind of say I'll bring two, I'll bring two, it will quickly add up. Yeah, absolutely. So. And, and you know, if you bring a game, I think you get free entry. So it's you know yep. it's, it's and like, your transport costs are covered, you know. Yeah, it's, not like you don't, that. it's not like you don't get anything out of it. Um yeah. and then finally there was a uh, an event um uh playing pinball for Kaz which was held at Medway um Mike and Tony down there uh, raised two grand for cancer research, so well done. And uh, Kaz was Mike's partner who who sadly passed away with cancer. Cancer, she's one in two people. So, um, it was good that they ran that event, and I think um, they they did a ladies' event as well that that went with pretty well. So, um, well done. Get down to Medway. Um, they're in Kent, and again, this other thing: if you've got a venue near you. Go and visit them and give them some cash because it's not easy running these venues. Um, I can I can tell you from horrible horrible experience. So look, we're going to end kind of part one here, I think, Scott. Um, yep. And um, part two will be will be the the guys, some of the guys that came to TPF. I mean, I've said it was about I don't know what five or six of us. It was a good laugh. There was, there was some. Um, all I'm going to say is, Revolver, Dave Bishop, and scary moments. If that doesn't get you okay. into watching 
the the next episode i do not know what will but uh it was it was it was a great gig um we ate loads of barbecue drank loads of beer and, and shot the shit out of a few things so um and and including including pinball but uh yeah oh oh lots to hear about from that it was it was a great week and actually um you know the guys are, there's a debate about going to chicago um i'm definitely going to tpf next year i definitely recommend everyone to go to tpf it's such a good gig uh and we had a right laugh so um <clears throat> just i think on on that note um first of all sorry we, we took a bit longer to get together just a lot going on both my life, I was on a holiday for two weeks with my grandkids in Florida. Scott's uh, got a lot going on in his space. Um, and we'll be, we'll, we'll, we've got part two out as soon as we can. We'll get this out, up and part two will follow in the next week or so. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, and then we'll be back uh, sometime in May. So, and look, enjoy your pinball, folks. Be sensible about it. Don't buy it if you can't afford it. Um <laughs> And and because because if you it, this you know this this thing's a bit of a monster. The more you feed it, the hungrier it gets. It's like an air balloon. You can just keep blowing air and air, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Um, and and it you know it's called inflation for a reason. But but we're kind of driving uh, madflation, is what I would call it. Um, and um, it's it's. You know, people think, ah, oh, it's down on charging 10 grand because everyone's been selling pins for 10 grand. I don't believe that at all. I believe that they're doing, the manufacturers are selling because they've had some real inflation challenges. I'm in manufacturing. I've seen it in what I build. Um, and, you know, what they're doing seems to to make sense to some extent. Um, but I think we're all, I think we're all feeling it in that, you know, a fifteen grand a pinball machine market is probably not a market that's got a lot of life in it, and for the no. term. So let's be sensible. And there's lots of great pinball machines out there. I just bought a Flash Gordon for just over two grand, and it's one of the best games of all time. Um, so there's bargains out there if you if you if you go look at it. It's simple to operate. I mean, it's simple to keep going. Um, it's the simplest game ever, and it will keep you happy for years. Uh, so look for those bargains. Classic Bally's, classic Stearns, classic Williams. Um, they are they're there to be found and they're they're, they're glorious games. Um anything to add, Scott? No, not really. I'd say like, you know, from my perspective, I think as I say, we'll wait for part two where we can actually get into the shenanigans that you guys got to in Texas. I think it'll be <laughs> a, it'll be an interesting treat. Yes, so it will definitely. There's definitely some amusement to be had. Um, it was uh, <laughs> it was a fun fun weekend, and um, look, we'll uh, we'll see you guys on on the next show, and speak to you then. Bye, folks. Bye bye.